Damn. Let's play a game. It was your last night on Earth. <laughs> Come on, try need to get to the last stop by morning. It's like a butler or something. <laughs> Benny has his hands full tonight. It's late at night, and a man named Jay Perez is picking up his girlfriend, Maria, from a laundromat. As they're driving, Jay notices a Maserati tailing them. From his reaction, it's clear that he recognizes the car and is far from pleased to see it. In a split second, they pull over, and Jay retrieves a gun. The blonde man in the Maserati is Victor, a vampire. As soon as the traffic light turns green, Jay steps on the gas and speeds away. Jay exits the car to confront Victor, instructing Maria to drive the car away. He stumbles upon a horrifying sight in a basement. Three bodies hanging upside down, blood draining from them. Meanwhile, Mary is about to start the car when suddenly, the window is smashed. Jay hears the noise, but when he returns, Maria is nowhere to be found. Switching scenes, we're introduced to the main character, Benny, who is dozing off in class. Benny is a simple, kind-hearted guy who lives with his grandmother and is studying economics in college. In his free time, Benny is a beat maker, and he's quite good at it. His grandmother, Abuela, is a sweet old lady who loves to cook, especially for Benny. Benny's room reveals his interests. He's a fan of skating and Naruto. While Benny is working on a new beat, he overhears his brother Jay talking to someone on the phone. Jay works as a personal driver for the wealthy but he has other commitments today. Benny offers to take his place and work for him because he needs the money. Initially, Jay is skeptical, but eventually, he decides to give Benny a chance and hands him the keys. Benny's job is to chauffeur people around in a luxurious black Cadillac Escalade. This car can be started from the outside with just a button. Since Benny is filling in for Jay tonight, he has to introduce himself as Jay to everyone. Benny is thrilled to drive such a car and wear such a fancy outfit. His face lights up like a child who just received the toy he wanted for Christmas. In the evening, Benny drives to a mansion to pick up his clients. He's quite nervous and wants to appear very professional. Suddenly, a beautiful red-haired girl emerges from the mansion. Benny mistakes her for Zoe Moreau, but the girl's name is Blair. Blair is a close friend of Zoe's. Benny embarrasses himself because Blair notices his zipper is down. Not to mention, he didn't realize he was supposed to open the car door for her. He's clearly out of his element. You can tell from a mile away that this is his first experience as a personal driver. We finally meet Zoe Moreau, a character with a peculiar personality. She's quite aggressive but with finesse. Benny's job is to drive the girls to five different destinations before sunrise. While they're in the car, the girls propose a game to Benny. They ask him what he would do if he knew that tonight would be his last night. Blair and Zoe are expecting something spectacular. But Benny says he's a pretty chill guy and doesn't have any particular fantasies. At this point, Zoe asks him who he would kill, her, Blair, or his grandmother. Benny tries to maintain his professionalism but ends up joking that he would kill Zoe. Throughout the ride, Benny can't help but constantly look at Blair. He's really taken with her. They arrive at their first destination, a party where guests are wearing masks. Before entering the mansion, the girls take out an amulet with a red stone. Apparently, you can only enter if you have one of these. Meanwhile, Jay is planning how to deal with the vampire issue. On the same night, Victor has started a war. The girls haven't returned yet, so Benny steps out of the car to get some fresh air. On the ground, he finds an amulet identical to the one the girls had. Soon after, the girls exit the mansion and head to their next destination. They pull into an underground parking lot, and like the first time, Benny has to wait for them. In the meantime, Benny notices that Zoe left her phone in the car. He also notices that she received texts from Victor. Victor is asking for Jay, and at that point, it seems strange to Benny because for tonight, he is Jay. Shortly thereafter, Benny tries to call Jay, who does not answer. This seems strange to him, and he begins to peek into Zoe's purse. He finds a lot of money with blood stains in the middle of the bag. As he touches and counts the money, he accidentally gets blood on his face and on the collar of his shirt. As if that wasn't enough, an officer enters the parking lot. Benny doesn't wait too long and gets out of the car and starts running inside where the girls entered. It looks like a hotel. At the entrance, he meets the concierge who notices that Benny is very agitated, sweaty, and has a blood stain on the collar of his shirt. She's about to call security, 
but everything changes when she sees the amulet in Benny's hand. The concierge immediately begins to apologize, and Benny tries to pretend that he is really the possessor of the amulet. The concierge walks Benny to the elevator and tells him to drink responsibly, but she's not referring to alcohol. When Benny enters the room, he's petrified when he sees Blair and Zoe sucking blood from the necks of two guys. Zoe, with blood on her mouth, lifts Benny up with two hands and begins to scare him. At this point, Benny confesses that he's not actually Jay, but his brother. Zoe wants to suck his blood, deeming him useless since he's not Jay, but Blair manages to persuade her, telling her that Benny would take them to Jay. Suddenly, one of the guys wakes up. In fact, this party had been planned, and these two consciously chose to be food for the vampires. They were being paid to feed the vampires with their blood, but Zoe had gotten a little too loose and killed one of them. She doesn't think twice and tells Blair to finish off the second guy. In the meantime, Benny begins to run outside. As soon as he arrives outside, he's stopped by the officer he ran away from earlier. Benny desperately tells him what happened, but the officer doesn't seem surprised at all. In fact, he wants to arrest him and take him away but is interrupted by the two girls who had finished dinner. The girls and the officer seem to know each other. In fact, he knows they are vampires. After a short discussion, the officer lets Benny go free. He tries to text someone, but Zoe notices him and breaks his phone. Meanwhile, Victor, in his very luxurious mansion, is drinking fresh blood. In the basement of the house, he has people from whom blood is being extracted. They are tied up and asleep inside glass boxes. After a taste of blood, Victor leaves in his Maserati to pay a visit to some special people. In the meantime, Benny is in the car with the two girls and tries one more time to escape. He unbuckles his belt and gets out of the car but is surprised by Zoe who had practically teleported in front of him. Back to Victor, he comes to visit Grace and Eva, two very powerful vampires in the city. In fact, Victor works for them. The girls, Grace and Eva, work with Martin, another boss in LA. The girls know that Victor crossed the line of Boyle Heights and killed Maria, Jay's girlfriend. At this point, the girls must decide how to punish Victor because he had broken a peace pact that lasted for years. Grace tells Victor that he would be banned from the town for a long time, but the girls didn't expect Victor to say that he wasn't going anywhere. After that, he uncovers his plan to take over all of LA. Eva tries to call Martin right away, but they didn't know that Martin had already been killed by Victor. They are breathless when Victor pulls out Martin's ear like Mike Tyson. At this point, no one could save them, and they were both killed by Victor. In the meantime, Benny and the girls had stopped at a market. Zoe went out to buy something. In the car, Benny is very agitated, and Blair tries to calm him down. She reveals to him that vampires and humans live together in this town, following certain rules. Also, she tells them that Zoe is Victor's girlfriend. Blair and Zoe manage the money from different businesses and blood clubs. Victor, having a thirst for power, had been planning this night for a long time. He wants to kill all the five leaders of the city to take absolute power of the city. Blair also tells them that Jay, Benny's brother, runs the Boyle Heights territory, and Victor wanted to use him to turn him against the city leaders. That's why Victor had killed Maria to provoke Jay. But the plan had changed as Benny showed up in Jay's place. So Benny was to take the girls to his brother. Between Benny and Blair, then's a spark. The two are getting closer. In the meantime, Jay had regrouped his gang to hunt vampires. They arrived at the mansion of an LA boss named Gio. Chio tells Jay that Blair and Zoe came to his party and made this killing. Plus, they sucked pretty much all of his blood, so he urgently needed a drink. After revealing that Blair and Zoe are on their way to a well-known club in LA called the Three Kings, however, their informant is abruptly silenced by a hail of bullets. As they approach the entrance to the club, Benny is spotted by some old college friends. They intercept him, hoping to use his recognition to gain entry to the club themselves. They then proceed to ridicule him for his current occupation as a driver. Blair, unable to tolerate their mockery, takes hold of Benny and initiates a passionate kiss. Meanwhile, Jay and his crew have also arrived at the club, on the lookout for the two girls mentioned by Gio. Inside the club, Blair and Zoe encounter Caleb, a vampire hunter. Caleb is not alone, and within moments, the girls find themselves encircled by a group of men. Just as the men are about to attack, Benny hurls a champagne bottle at Caleb's head, 
causing a momentary distraction. This impulsive act by Benny allows the girls to break free from their would-be attackers. As they make their exit from the club, Jay spots Benny and recognizes him. As Jay attempts to follow Benny, he is halted by a member of the club's staff. Enraged, Jay pulls out a knife and plunges it into the man's heart. The man, revealed to be a vampire, collapses to the ground and begins to disintegrate. Outside the club, the girls and Benny are about to get into their car when they come under attack from Jay's group, who are armed with crossbows. They quickly get into the car, and Benny drives off. Zoe, seemingly oblivious to the danger, sticks her head out of the window and lets out a triumphant howl. Benny decides to aid Blair and Zoe in their escape and offers them a place to hide at his house. Benny's grandmother is terrified by their sudden arrival and demands an immediate explanation. Benny has never brought a girl home before, and his grandmother is understandably shocked. Meanwhile, Jay and his friends are intercepted by an officer working for Victor. The officer informs Jay that Victor wishes to speak with him at the Rosso Poro restaurant. Back at Benny's house, Zoe is on the phone with Victor, who tells her that there is only one boss left for them to kill. As the night progresses, Benny and Blair find themselves growing increasingly fond of each other. Blair, with her captivating charm, and Benny, with his unassuming nature, evoke a sense of melancholy in each other. Blair was once a human, living a normal life, until she was transformed by Zoe. Sometimes, she yearns for her old human life. The time comes for them to move on to their next destination. Blair is reluctant for Benny to accompany them, fearing for his safety. However, Benny insists on going with them. At the same time, Jay arrives at the restaurant for his meeting with Victor. Victor intends to use this meeting to distract Jay and make his final move. As Victor speaks, Jay shoots him in the head and attempts to stab him in the heart with a knife. However, Victor grabs his hand and begins to regenerate his head. He then reveals to Jay that he has killed Maria and cooked her flesh, which Jay has unknowingly been eating. Benny and the girls arrive at Rocco's bar. Rocco is a wild character and is taken aback by their unannounced arrival. So he wants to speak with him, so Benny and Blair step outside. After sharing a drink with Rocco, Zoe pulls out a knife. Outside, things get interesting as Benny and Blair begin to share stories about their pasts. This leads to them sharing a passionate kiss. Inside the bar, Rocco realizes that Zoe intends to kill him. When she tries to strike, he manages to stop her. This triggers a fight between Blair, Zoe, and Rocco's friends. Meanwhile, Benny has gotten into the car and assists the girls by running over one of the vampire hunters. With that, the night is over. Blair and Zoe have achieved their objectives, but Zoe has been injured and needs blood. Benny drops the girls off at the last location on their list, only to discover that the house belongs to Victor. Blair urges him to leave, but Benny refuses to abandon his brother, who is inside the house. Benny finds several human prisoners being held captive by Victor who uses them as a source of blood. Among the prisoners is Jay, and Benny is captured by Victor while trying to free him. Victor and Zoe then threaten to kill Benny, and Zoe realizes that she has feelings for him. Victor hands Zoe a knife, and in a fit of rage, she stabs Blair in the stomach. In response, Benny remotely activates his brother's car, breaking a window and letting in sunlight that kills Zoe. Victor then attacks Benny, using Jay as bait. He manages to bite Benny before Jay confronts him in the sunlight, killing him. Benny soon turns into a vampire, and the brothers part ways after Jay decides to train as a professional vampire hunter. He tells Benny that he expects him to fight alongside him when the city descends into chaos. Later that night, Benny meets Blair for a night of blood drinking. I hope you enjoyed this story. If you did, be sure to check out other stories by clicking on these pictures.